are here today to chew bubble gum and do a movie review. And we're all out of bubble gum. <laughs> As you can see by this guy's shirt and maybe the sunglasses give you a clue, we are going to talk about They Live, which is one of John Carpenter's best in my opinion. Oh yeah, and as it happens in the movie, this will give me a headache if I wear it indoors yep. too much, so I will take them off now, but it is a lot of fun. They Live from 1988, John Carpenter, one of my favorites in his all-time favorite movies. But first, let's kick off with like our memories of They Live. So I'm going to ask you, Gail, how far back do you go with this movie, and what are you, kind of your first memories of discovering it? I remember watching it, I mean, definitely like late 80s, early 90s on TV, so okay. like <laughs> late night probably early 90s then mm -hmm. um late night tv uh with the language cut out it would have been the, the so, tv broadcast not like cable or right, anything right right like yeah. oh no we didn't have cable yeah neither did we <laughs> yeah. so you pick a channel three five eight maybe uh -huh. 19 maybe mm -hmm. 43 at that point Right. Um, cuz 43 in our area used to play old movies and stuff. It wouldn't have been old then, but they no, but they, they did, would play movies. They played that, like, like, you know, yeah, popular stuff that yeah. late, yeah. Um but I so the I came here to chew bubble gum and kick ass is the original line. I very clearly remember that being bleeped. <laughs> <laughs> I came here to chew bubble gum and and, and all, all of the bubble gum. That just doesn't work. You no, know? <laughs> it doesn't. But I very clearly remember that. So, of course, that's one of the most memorable lines from this particular movie. And oh, it's, yeah. it's been cemented in my brain because it bleeped. And yeah. there are, like, I mean, I remember watching, like, Tango and Cash and, and different movies on TV bleeped um, mm -hmm. back in that same time frame. And some of those lines just yeah. don't work. When they would edit a movie... For television you would watch it knowing it was edited you could see the lips not moving right the word clearly was not supposed to be what it what you knew what you could sometimes you could like lips lip read the the bad word <laughs> and the guy was oh, saying yeah. crap but it, but it came out as you know <laughs> well, a very uh definite it came out as Friend you Friend. <laughs> in, in Tango and Cash. I think. Oh, um, man. Uh, you you got to kind of give them props for their creativity. You think about a guy sitting in a booth like, all right, I got to edit this movie for TV. Like, oh, man, how do I, you know, um, man, what, what word do I use to fix that? Friend? Okay. You know, hey, you know what? They pay by the hour. Start, both start with F, so I guess that works. <laughs> I love it. That's classic. Oh, my goodness. So, for me, uh, I saw the uncut version on VHS. Okay. So, this came out in November 1988, mm -hmm. and I didn't see it in the theater. I was, I was um, you know, too young. You know, I was about, I was 13 in November of 88. And we did sometimes see movies like this, but we, we didn't go to see this one. However, the we rented it. Like maybe a year later, or, you know, it wasn't super long past when this first came out. So I might have been fourteen when I first saw this, and it was it was uh, my dad and I watched it. it was, I think it was just him and me. Like sometimes we just go to the video store and we get you know something that looked cool. Mm -hmm. And I I didn't really back then pay attention to who the creators were sure. of things. I didn't really, at, at that age, think about that. Mm -mm. It was later, it wasn't much later than that, that I started piecing together that, huh, the same guy that did the Halloween movie did the They Live movie. Wow, I wonder, what, what's that mean? What else has that guy done, you know? Yeah. I started putting that together, you know, when I started getting a little bit deeper into my teens. But I think at this point, I didn't, I didn't go, oh, okay, it's John Carpenter, I gotta watch it. All I knew was a cool movie. With a guy running around fighting aliens. That's all I needed to know. That's all you needed. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, like, I remember my dad and I watching this on VHS and, and just loving it. You know, we mm -hmm. just enjoyed it. And it's been a classic, uh, just 
fun movie that I've come to appreciate more as I've gotten older, actually, and mm -hmm. been able to kind of pick apart the nuances and the, and the subtleties in it. And one thing I want to kind of talk about is how the idea, it, you know, it's, it's definitely not a comedy. It's an action adventure with, you know, comedic overtones. But it's, it's very much a satire. Yep. You know, there's a lot of satire in this, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's witty and sharp. And I just kind of want to kind of gloss over that for a moment because, you know, you think about the idea of, of course, we all, I hope you, you're watching kind of, you know, know the plot. Basically, they're aliens that are controlling the world and they're, uh, anyone who's a human is being given subliminal messages by all this media and this group of uh, freedom fighters create sunglasses that you put on and you can see the messages and you can see that the aliens who are posing as humans mm -hmm. are actually aliens. Okay, so that's the plot. And then a, a ragtag group of, you know, good blue collar down on their luck, you know, Reagan era, you know, isn't taking good care of them type characters are, are the heroes. And I just think that's, that, that's fascinating to look at the idea of how there's, just this, this entity controlling everything. Oh, yeah. And, you know, in the internet era that we live in, it's even more poignant than ever. Mm -hmm. And uh, th this kind of, like, touched on that. And a uh, very fascinating kind of sociological study going on here, you know, on top of the kicking butt and beating up aliens and all that fun stuff and the cracking one-liners. So, <laughs> you know, I just wanted to kind of, kind of mention that, how, how uh, it, it does kind of stand the test of time that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why don't we, yeah, why don't we uh, just, just uh, kind of talk about just the crack writing in this has, has just some great moments and great lines that are put in those moments. Mm -hmm. We love to talk about lines on our other show, Coming Up New House, where we... Uh, cover the simpsons uh go check that out it's pretty cool we always talk about lines because the simpsons are just wrapped full of them uh but this movie has some great ones too yeah so why don't, why don't you give me one that you like and we'll talk about why you liked it and the scene it was in okay uh so i'm just gonna start with the golden rule he who has the gold makes the rules yeah so that's the that's a good new one. definition of the golden rule <laughs> And I've, I've heard that throughout my life as I got older being thrown around, you know, in just casual conversation. With he who has the gold yeah. makes the rules. I've heard that from people. And I wonder if they got it from this movie. Yeah. Or, or if it yeah. was Because I, I just remember, like, being at work and, you know, at the break room and we're sitting around at lunch and we're talking about, you know, whatever's going on in the world and somebody throwing that line out there. Huh. During casual conversation. Interesting. So that, you know, it, it, it's great. And I, I wonder if this movie kicked that off or, or, or if they co-opted it from some other source. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I started it off with that one. That's a great I, there one. are some way better lines than that, and I'm sure you wrote them down. But I was also <laughs> trying to judge what you were going to pick, so I didn't duplicate you. So... <laughs> That's all right. I threw a few down here. Okay. And, you know, if you if you pick one I have here, I got backups. It's okay. all good. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm going to go with when the, the main character, Roddy Roddy Piper, plays the main character. And his name is Nada, but it's never mentioned in the movie. No, it's just in the yeah. credits. Right. And, and that is a throwback to the original short story that this is based on. The character's name was that in the short story. Mm -hmm. So Carpenter kept that as his name, but it's only shown in the credits and it's never mentioned. So I just think it's Rowdy Roddy Piper <laughs> who's who's fighting the aliens. It's not it's not a guy named Nada, it's Piper, but um Oh one hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> so when when he first discovers the aliens, they're very ugly. And he's in a store and there's this prim and proper lady that, you know, definitely looks like a high so socialite type lady. Yep. And he's looking at her like this. And he's like, you know, with these on, she looks terrible. And he says, you know, you look like your head fell in the cheese dip back in 1957. <laughs> and she's like, what? <laughs> I wrote that one down. <laughs> and the way he delivers it, it's, it's just great. And then he says, 
you're okay. This one, real fucking ugly. <laughs> You didn't expect me to say it on... I know, but I'm very proud of you. <laughs> yeah. And then another one, he says, You see, I, I take these glasses off. She looks like a regular person. Doesn't she? Put them back on. Formaldehyde face. <laughs> Best scene. Oh, that scene is... Just kill her. I love it. It's so good. And the the person at the cash register is just like, what? what, buddy? You can't do this. You gotta leave. You know, just he's totally chill. Like, and he's human. He doesn't have a formaldehyde face, but yeah, he's just completely chill. And then he's like, no, we can't do that. We can't say things like that. You gotta go. Get out of here. And I think it's you know it, it's interesting how this is set up. So these aliens. They all are either in a position of authority or affluent. They have mm -hmm. money and power. Mm -hmm. And then there are the rank and file people. There's the poor people in the shanty town. There's workers, blue collar workers, whatever. And but there are other humans who are also either middle class or doing okay and they're affluent. Mm -hmm. And we kind of come to find out that you know the people that are playing ball with the aliens end up in positions where they get that opportunity mm -hmm. or whatnot to become successful and have money and, and whatever and they don't necessarily re realize that's what's going on oh no i don't think so yeah and but when uh you know piper puts on the glasses and like he's in a ballroom or something you just see like humans mingled with the oh, aliens yeah. and they're just kind of coexisting like that but when it's all said and done you know, the, the, the 1%, if you want to put it that way, are, are pulling the strings and running the show. And it's like, huh, uh, you know, he had his finger on a pulse of something there. You know, he just kind of framed it in a, in a sci-fi thing. But uh, really cool. I, you know, the, the, the fact that he was able to, A, have some humor like this, oh, some yeah. satire, but also make a point and get people thinking uh brilliant brilliant mm -hmm. ideas there <laughs> so going back the lines the whole um this might be something you'd be interested in so the whole uh, i'm here to chew bubble gum and kick ass part so it turns out that roddy piper created that it wasn't nice. in the original script nice so um of course you, you might know if you don't know uh, Roddy Piper was a wrestler, WrestleMania, which was a big deal in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And apparently he had a notebook and he would write down stuff that he, he might want to say as, as his character, Rowdy Roddy Piper, uh, it, who was a wrestler. Uh -huh. And he showed it to Carpenter one day and that line was in there. And Carpenter said, I think that line would be great for this scene where you walk into the bank with your shotgun. And and, and they agreed, and, and that's how the line got into the scene. That's pretty great. And uh, that's, that's, that's hilarious. He really doesn't have a ton of lines in this movie either. Um, no. Even though he's the main star, he just he really gets by with some grunts and his facial expressions tell the story a lot mm -hmm. throughout this. But when he delivers a line, it is a line that you are going to write down in this notebook <laughs> and you want to put it on this show. Yeah. But I limited myself. <laughs> so just, uh, another great one I want to throw out there is there he, he's walking around the glasses and there's a, a lady who's putting he's primping herself in the mirror or whatever she or she's primping herself and he sees her and he sees her real self and he says that's like pouring perfume on a pig <laughs> <laughs> so he's got no problem going around and insulting nope. all these all these aliens of course one of the aliens i think was a cop says you know you look just as bad to us as yeah, we do to you the cop. and then he said his reply is impossible <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> So another one he said was, uh, brother likes a bitch and she's back in heat. <laughs> that was a good one. Too. That was a good one. And then I just kind of wrote down what some of the subliminal messages were. So the writing on the money was, this is your God. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. back to, you know, Carpenter mm -hmm. kind of making a point, you know. And then the writing on the wall, they live, we sleep. Yep. You know, that's where the they live comes from. 
And then um, there was a subliminal message that said, no imagination, that stuck out to me. Mm -hmm. So they just want people to walk around and just consume and obey yeah. and, and, and do what they're told. Get and don't, married and reproduce. Yeah, you know, so they can make more people that yep. they can control, yep. you know, all that stuff. So I, I wrote those down because I, I thought mm -hmm. that would be fun. So. Well, I have to throw my favorite line from, he's, uh, he's in a lot of fights in this movie for mm -hmm. sure um but that he's i think it's right out of the side of the bank but there's a cop that's a human cop and he's been fighting all day oh, okay. and this human cop comes up to him and and they're about ready to fight and then he he just says beat your feet and the <laughs> cop like he takes off he's yeah because he's got the gun on he's him got this, yeah he's got the shotgun and yeah. the cop of course has a gun but he just looks at the situation and realizes that he's not gonna win this mm -hmm. fight so he goes yeah. off so beat your feet was one of my favorites and also they ain't from cleveland <laughs> i can tell you that <laughs> <laughs> that was a great one what <laughs> like like uh um, Keith David was asking, yeah. you know, where are they from? And he's like, well, they ain't from Cleveland. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> and I agree. We, we, we're not technically from Cleveland, but we're close to That's it. That's true. So I ain't seen the Whaling. No. Nope. Uh, we don't have the right kind of glasses. No, it's true. But, <laughs> no, some really great lines for sure. I love it. So, yeah, let's get into uh, some of your other stuff that you have on there i have some trivia too and yeah. we can talk about scenes and such too yeah that sounds great um yeah i want to kind of start off like talking about the cast because it's it's a good cast so like i just mentioned you know, you got keith david he's great he of course he was in the thing mm -hmm. you that know was his debut. that was his debut mm -hmm. yeah and then carpenter brought him back yep. for this mm -hmm. and you know and of course since then he's been in so much so stuff much. and he's cool you yeah. know he, he always he's shows amazing. up yeah and he, he's a great, like, um, like kind of counter to Roddy Piper in this. Mm -hmm. And I think I read somewhere where it's like Carpenter didn't want a sidekick kind of character. He wanted a character that could hold his own. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that makes perfect sense because you can, it, it, going off the fight scene, which we'll get into. Oh, good. You know, um, you know he, he definitely is great casting mm -hmm. for that. Um, but like Roddy Piper himself, this was his first movie because mm -hmm. I guess like they saw him on WrestleMania oh, yeah. and thought, okay, this guy yes. could do the role. Yep. Now I was never a fan of the wrestling stuff in the eighties as a kid. I, I I'll I'll just be honest with you about that. I um I, I thought it was silly. It wasn't. <laughs> That's blowing your mind. <laughs> Now I've come to appreciate it later in life, but as a kid, I didn't. I didn't drink that Kool Aid because yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't a story. A lot of times, it was just a lot of them getting up there and, rah, and just oh, yeah. throwing each other around. Well, you the, had Hulk Hogan and you had Roddy Roddy they're, Roddy they're Piper. Big personalities. You had huge personalities, yeah. and they were amazing. They, yeah, to watch. and you know, I've, I've appreciated them later in Hokey life. Hokey as hell, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, I was at the type that was like, Ooh, I gotta watch wrestling, you know, this right. weekend, you know, all this, you know, I, if it was on or I was at a friend's house or something, yeah. I, I would sit through it, but I, I never was like super into that. I didn't hate it or anything. I just, it, you it just, just wasn't, weren't, it just yeah. wasn't your jam. You were watching yeah. movies. Yeah. I was watching, I was a movie kid. I was a TV, I, yeah. was, I was a narrative you know, right. I, you were I, I a, wanted. You've always been a storyteller. So yeah, you wanted the story, not the. Not the flash the and the goof. And, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And every now and then there would be like a, there would be a rivalry that these, oh, this yeah. guy didn't like that guy, and they would, you know, they yell at each other, and then they get in the ring and fight. But to me, that wasn't enough of a character arc to to mm -hmm. make me into it. Mm -hmm. uh, but with all that said, I did like Rowdy Roddy Piper. I thought he was one of the better ones mm -hmm. like if, if i look at the you know in a hulk hogan you had randy macho man savage yeah. you had rowdy Roddy piper mm -hmm. and you had you know was it jesse ventura you know wasn't he a wrestler yeah, yeah he was a wrestler yeah yeah um so you had um you, you know you had that those big names that were mm -hmm. that were kind of always front row center I, I thought he was 
one of the coolest ones. But when I first saw this movie, I didn't associate him with that. Mm -hmm. I just was like, he, he's he, cool. In he, this movie. He's just he's his own thing. Yeah. Here. Oh, he definitely I, is. He, he, didn't, not, he doesn't. Yeah. Have his... He never brought that. Like one to me, he's this character. Right. When I think of Roddy Piper, I think of this movie. Yeah. And I think of like this character from this movie. I don't necessarily think of his wrestling. Mm -hmm. I guess is a roundabout way of me getting to no, say that. that. Um, but so I, I think he's really good in this though. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think I think you mentioned when we were talking earlier about how Kurt Russell yeah they, was, was Kurt Russell on deck was who for this. John Carpenter really wanted for the yeah. role mm -hmm. um, because of course he worked with Kurt and other. John Carpenter movies, such as The Thing that mm. we mentioned, yeah. uh, but he was watching WrestleMania 3, and he saw Roddy Piper, and he just, he was like, nope, that's him, that's, mm -hmm. the, because the character was written in the short story, and then also in the comic book adaptation, that he was just kind of a rugged, scarred up, kind of, um, beat down to the core, more... Uh, savage more, looking yeah. than Kurt Russell. He was he was more like I don't know, rugged blue collar. He yes. just kind of had that to him. Now I'm going to start by saying, and you know this, but I love Kurt Russell. Absolutely, he is probably up there as one of my favorite mm -hmm. stars ever, just because his filmography is amazing. And when you look at what he did with Carpenter, Escape from New York, the thing, and he played Elvis in a TV movie. Yeah. And then, of course, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. And so I can totally see why Carpenter would, like, kind of be thinking about this when he's writing or when they're putting mm -hmm. this together. But um, I am glad that he went with Piper. Me too. Yeah, because Piper's got, like, this this crazy manic, you know, he, he brings that, you know. He does. Yeah, I'm just intense and I'm crazy and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight these aliens. He just got that... That thing, and I think Russell can make that happen if he yeah. wants to, but just Piper just had it in, indigenous to him, you know. Well, and there and are moments was. in this movie that, you know, <laughs> Roddy's not doing anything but just watching, mm -hmm. observing, and he's got this kind of smirky, smirky look on his face. Like yeah. he knows, and he's not really smirking, he just. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's just so sure of himself and of the world. And I'm not saying that Kurt Russell couldn't have pulled that off, but yeah. it's just the natural appearance of mm -hmm. Roddy Piper not not acting. Yeah. Just him just being, being him this guy is in yeah. this movie. Yeah. So it's it, it's, he just does a great job. Yeah. And I, I, don't, I mean, I'm sure I would probably appreciate this movie in some ways, but he really makes this movie for me. I agree. I agree. Let's talk about scenes and favorite scenes, and I'm sure that uh, one of them is going to be the same as mine. So, uh, the first one, let's talk about the fight scene. Absolutely, let's do talk about the fight scene. And and by the fight scene, I think you know what we mean. That knockdown drag out between, between uh, Keith, Keith David, David and, and, Roddy, and Roddy Piper. In the alleyway. <laughs> it is, without a doubt, in my opinion, one of the best, like, bare knuckle, just like, Knockdown, drag out mm -hmm. scenes ever made. I can't really think of too many that no. need this. It, it's just so raw and like real. And there are, I think, some moments just yeah. from my memory in that yeah. fight scene that that Roddy does bring out some of his wrestle, wrestling moves um, yeah. in the fight. But absolutely, uh, we I think we talked about it a little bit mm -hmm. before, but you had mentioned something about it not. It wasn't supposed to be as long as... Yeah, so what, one thing I found was the, the original concept was it was only supposed to be like a 20-second fight. And it was just supposed to be they, they hit each other and then they get to the putting the glasses on and, and uh, you know, Keith David sees what's going on. Mm -hmm. But uh, Keith David and Roddy Piper apparently, like, decided they wanted it to be better than that. Yeah. So they spent a couple weeks rehearsing. They spent a month. This, a month. A month. Okay. It was a whole month rehearsing. Rehearsing this and then pitched Carpenter, watch this, and then they did it. Yeah. And the only, like, punches they pulled were to the face and to the groin, and the rest of it was them actually, like, doing the bit. And Carpenter was like, okay, let's do this. 
and it goes over five minutes. They're flipping around each other. <laughs> They're kneeing each other in lower region places. Yeah. And oh, it's, it's brutal. It's so brutal just because Keith David will not put on the sunglasses. <laughs> and he's, you know, he's stubborn. And uh -huh. they're both super stubborn. And it's just, mm -hmm. this is what. And then at one point, um, <laughs> as a throwback to one of the lines that Keith David mentions earlier in a movie that he wants to, like, use a sledgehammer and bust up some of their fancy cars. Um, one of them picks up a stick and busts through a fancy car window, and then, <laughs> and then Nada uh -huh. just starts laughing at that moment, and then the fight just continues, and it's just, yeah. it's great. And it's on, like, concrete. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, it's and in a gross, it's, disgusting yes. Skid Row alley. And I gotta wonder, did they dress up that alley, or did they just find an alley? I think and they do probably it? just found an alley and did it. Yeah, and they're just on the ground and you know just going at it. And then you know, as as it's progressing, their faces are bloody and oh yeah, and swollen. bruised and swollen. And then by the time it's all said and done, you can tell they both just been through it. Yep. And uh, they're it, breathing heavily. And... Yeah. I, like I said before, I really, you know, I've seen, you know, obviously many movies and there's been lots of great movie fights in film history, you know, but this one is up there as like one of the best, like two guys pairing off bare knuckles going at it. it it's really, you know, it just has that visceral, realistic feel versus like, you know, if you watch a, a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie and he's doing his kicks and twirls and it's all choreographed, you can, it, it's cool, I like that stuff, but you know that that was choreographed by mm -hmm. a stuntman, and so is this, but it doesn't feel like it. No, it, it, yeah. I mean, it was, but, yeah. it, you know, they yeah. worked on it together to right. make it look the way they wanted it to look, so. Right. And I love that John Carpenter was yeah. allowing that collaboration with yeah. his actors, and I know he's done that in other movies, too. Right. And I think that's a good thing that makes him such a great director mm -hmm. is that he's, you know, willing to, you know, listen to good ideas and yeah. take them when, when he sees them. Yeah. That, that's a smart thing to do in that position. So. Mm -hmm. and got, what other scenes do you want to talk about? Um, so he takes a hostage, if you will, mm -hmm. and it's another fabulous actress that we haven't mentioned yet, Meg mm -hmm. Foster. Yes. <laughs> and she was in... Practically, I don't know. I feel like everything that we watched in the '80s, and she, you know, Evil Lynn. From yes, Masters I was gonna say one of your favorite movies ever. <laughs> Masters. And we of we will have to do Masters. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway, uh, Meg Foster just has a very distinct look, and her eyes are yes, just I, very. Miserable. I mentioned to yeah. him that I don't think that she's ever been anything but a villain in most of the movies yeah I think so right. so spoiler alert if you haven't watched this movie sorry i'm just we're spoiling this anyway this is but more of a spoiler it's, you know if you haven't seen something that came out in 1988 it's on you right yeah. now yeah pause watch this it. and go pause watch it, it. watch it <laughs> anyway so he ends up having her uh as a hostage to get him out of the Bank scene. Yeah, it was the bank scene. It was after the kick ass line. He yeah. shoots a bunch of aliens and And then he's in the parking yeah. garage and she's <laughs> going to her car and he gets her to take him out of the parking garage because the police are after him and whatnot. And she's just totally chill that whole drive. Mm -hmm. And they get back to her apartment and she's, you know, pretty chill in the apartment and she goes and fixes herself a drink and my favorite part of this whole is that he goes to look out the window and she just whomps him on the back of the head with a bottle and he goes out the window and over the, the roof and down and he just keeps tumbling, tumbling, tumbling and they're I like I'm guessing LA mm -hmm. area is where oh, they yeah. are and up in the high rise and so there's just <laughs> like a rock cliff and he just goes. And so just that moment, just that whole pressure of she just had that adrenaline pressure and mm. she just was ready to be out of bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> and out the window he goes. Uh, so that is amazing. <laughs> that's one of my favorite scenes from this. Mm. 
Well, another scene I like is later in the film, they're, they find out where the, that the aliens are broadcasting from the, the same station she works at, mm -hmm. and then that, that becomes the twist that she's working for the baddies. I can't spoil her alert. It, everything we do on this channel is spoiler because we cover old stuff. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and uh, they're, they're being chased by these like police guys or security guys or whatever. Yeah. And they have walkie-talkies that look like the PKE meters from Ghostbusters. And we looked it up. And yes, they, they are. are recycled props from yes. Ghostbusters. There were quite a few props <laughs> that were recycled for this movie. Um, but those were the ones that stood out to both of us as recognizable. And mm -hmm. I'm sure I, I'm sure there's a list online of what else was recycled. I didn't do a deep dive into that, but mm -hmm. I had to find that answer out because George mentioned it while we were watching the movie. And yes, indeed, mm -hmm. from Ghostbusters. I like it. That's mm -hmm. good stuff. I mean, you know, we you mentioned some of the subliminal messages too, but just that pure moment when he puts on the sunglasses and everything goes black and white when the sunglasses are on and he sees the world how it really is um, with those subliminal messages and the aliens' faces are shown versus without the sunglasses they look human mm -hmm. so that's just movie magic in my mind i love it mm -hmm. very great um use of black and white mm -hmm. for that that was a smart idea mm -hmm. that you know we're seeing everything in color but when you see the aliens world it's black and white mm -hmm. it's this is the true message here's the world and uh, that, was, that was a cool like, concept i think he did that so, of course, John Carpenter did the score, and I read when I was doing some research that that's completely improvised. He just, he didn't have a plan in place. He just started plucking around on a bass and came up with mm -hmm. some of the tune, and, and that's throughout this entire movie, and it's a one that sticks with you for a bit as well, yep. in pure John Carpenter fashion, mm -hmm. and... Um, I, it gives credit for a different name for a script writer. Right, I, I didn't write that down. I didn't write it down either, but it's, it's a pseudonym. It's a pseudonym yeah. for John Carpenter, and it's actually a throwback to a character in H.P. Uh, Lovecraft. I blanked for a second, so. Ah. Um, but it's a it's a throwback to that because he loves Lovecraft, and in the original script because I found a copy of that and I was loving on that on the internet for a bit. <laughs> um, it starts with a quote from Lovecraft. Nice. So that didn't make it in the, this version of the movie. That so we, that, that explains the thing, then, if he loves Lovecraft. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it was kind of an eye-opener when, when I saw that the other day, this weekend. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I guess it was. I just was like... Oh, oh, that makes so much sense now. <laughs> He's a fan of Lovecraft, so it's a lot of this makes sense to me. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing I found was this was originally supposed to release in like uh, mid October 1988, mm -hmm. but the movie Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, nice. was coming out that same weekend. And they didn't want to compete with that, mm -hmm. so they moved it into November, and then they thought. Well, this will be good for the the election that's coming up in mm -hmm. November. This would tie it into would that. Been, yep. But Halloween Four was the first Halloween movie that John Carpenter had nothing to do yep. with. He, of course, he directed the first one. He wrote and produced the second one, and he produced the third one. And he washed his hands of it after the third one mm -hmm. didn't make money, and he, they brought back Michael Myers in the fourth one, and he was done with it. So here he is competing with. The, the fourth movie in the series that he he started and then now he's bringing this yeah. <laughs> yeah. so that, that's kind of cool that's, wild. that's good <laughs> that's some really good trivia out there on yeah. this one too I didn't write a lot of it down so mm. just yeah I just found a couple of things and, yep. oh yeah I thought that was kind of neat that is really neat <laughs> good one 
So, any other scenes or ideas or lines or anything you want to go over here? I can't think of anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say to the audience, if you have not watched this movie, or it's been since 1988 since you watched (laughs) this movie, give it another watch. Uh, It's a great one to revisit for sure, or visit with fresh eyes. And even though I said spoiler alerts, there's so much more in this movie that you are bound to enjoy. Oh yeah, we didn't even really scratch the surface on all the the, the nuances and it just no. things going on. Fantastic. Yeah, it, it's really good. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so definitely check it out. Uh, they live, nineteen eighty eight. John Carpenter, great mm-hmm. cast, great story, just a fun movie, and I'm sure I'll be watching it again myself before too long because <laughs> yeah. it's one we throw on pretty pretty oh, yeah. regularly it's one of my all-time favorite movies it's yeah. on my i don't know it's in my top 20 list for sure yeah i agree i don't Same know that thing. i can put it in my top 10 but it's close so yeah but it's, it's, it's one i could watch let me ask you this this might this might be a really hard one but carpenter movies oh how, how does it rank for that Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah, because I mean, there's so many good ones. Yeah, that's a tough one. For this me is definitely I really a, love this one. This is definitely top five for me. Yeah, I'd say this is probably a top five for me yeah. too. Um, but you ask that question, and I don't know what I would put in my top one mm-hmm. for that. I, I will tell you what my top one is. Okay. Escape from New York. That's. I would probably <laughs> put Escape from New York yeah. up there, um, either one or two. Yeah. But this is. I love this movie so much. This one's also up yeah. there in one or two for me. Yeah, this is this is this might be two. It's not. It might be. It, it it's probably two. I didn't really like give it any thought till I just brought but, it up. But but, uh, but then you know we throw the it, thing in there and we throw yeah, all these other things. You start thinking about the and thing and Halloween. You yeah, know, I kind of put I, Halloween in a class by itself. Yeah. You know, it, but if we're talking about yeah. just John Carpenter as a whole. Mm-hmm then you have to throw them on the list. I don't yeah. know. That's a tough one for me. Well, why don't you tell us yep. who Rank is your... your favorite John yeah. Carpenter top three. Top, give us your in top the, three, Carpenter. In the comments below. Yeah. And uh, let us know what, what you would uh, rank it. That would be fun. I'd be interested in mm-hmm. seeing that. And I'm going to throw this one out there. If there's a top mm-hmm. Carpenter movie um, that you'd like us to review next... Ah. Throw that in the comments below. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let us know, and uh, I think we would be up for that, no Mm -hmm. doubt about it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. Well, that is our film, They Live. Good stuff. Thank you, Gail. It was a lot of fun covering this movie. We will be coming back at you again with some more of these reviews because we have a lot of fun with them. And also, go check out our Coming Up Millhouse channel. We will be doing those on a regular basis as well. We have many videos over there. I'll leave a link for that. And uh, we have a lot of fun with that, so go check Mm -hmm. it out. All right, thanks again, and we will see you later.